Alright, in this example, this first example, we want to create an equation that represents this uh, sine or cosine uh, graph. And then let me take you step by step through how to do this. So the first thing we want to do is kind of determine to ourselves, is it a sine or is it a cosine? So to remind us, I'm just going to draw a little mini picture of a sine curve and then a little mini picture of a cosine curve. And then I'm going to determine what I think um, the co what I think is uh, if it fits the sine better or the cosine better. And then later on you'll learn how to you can make it either one that you want. Well, I'm going to decide this is a sine because I see that it has an x intercept at zero and a sine curve has an x intercept at zero. So I like that and I think that might make it a little easier to get started here. So I'm going to determine or I'm going to make a decision that it's going to be a sine. Alright, so then we know when we're all done, we're going to have the equation, let me write it down here, it will be y equals a times sine of b times the quantity x minus c plus d. So that's the form that it's going to take. So you can probably figure out that you have to find your a, your b, your c, and your d, and then you'll be able to make the equation, which is exactly what we do. So step one was to determine whether we want to call it a sine or a cosine, and we did that. So step two, we're going to calculate the a. And the a is one half the absolute value of y max minus y min. So let's go look at the graph. And it looks like I have a maximum at 3, and it looks like I have a minimum at negative 3. So let's calculate our a. So a is 1 half the absolute value of 3 minus negative 3. And when you calculate that out, it turns out that that's 3. And let me just kind of box that in so I don't lose that right there. Okay. Um, now we want to look at the period, because I need to know the period in order to calculate B. So in words, a period is one cycle. And I would like you to look to determine cycle from maximum to maximum or from minimum to minimum. And I'd like you not to use x-intercepts because as we start looking at graphs that have been shifted up or down, those x-intercepts can be misleading. Um, so don't get in the habit of looking at x-intercepts to calculate the period. Look at maximums and look at minimums. All right, so we know that a maximum, I'm sorry, a period is one cycle. So from a maximum to a maximum is one cycle. So I'm just going to simply read from the graph how far that is. And then let me make this a little bigger here. And I think this is 5 pi over 4. So it looks like these are increments of pi over 4. Um, so you could just say 1, 2, 3, 4 increments of pi over 4. So that's pi. Or you could say 5 pi over 4 minus a pi over 4, and that's also pi. So once we know pi, we can calculate um, b. So the period, we call the period, was equal to the pure graph period, which is 2 pi over b. And I guess we should be calling this technically absolute value of b. Um, so this is going to be pi equals 2 pi over b. You're going to solve for b, so you're going to multiply both sides by b. You're going to divide both sides by pi, and you're going to end up with b. Here, I'll write it down here. b equals 2 pi over pi, and that reduces to 2. So, um, let's see. Let's make a list of them over here. So we have a is 3, because I'm going to have to do some erasing. So B we just said was 2. Okay. 
So let me erase what I've got here and then give us some more room to work. So the next thing we want to do is calculate phase shift. And by the way, you can calculate these things in any order. Remember when we graphed them, I said it's really important to do it in a certain order. It makes things easier. Well, it doesn't make any difference when you're um, calculating A, B, C, and D. You can do these things in any order. Okay. So now let's look at the phase shift. Okay. So this is how you do, how you figure out a phase shift. So for a sine curve, I have an x-intercept at zero, which it looks like I have an x-intercept at zero right there. And then we know, here's a, here's a different way to look at it. We know, let me draw a little bigger mini picture, that a maximum occurs one quarter of the way through a period. So if our period of this one is pi, then we should have a maximum at pi over 4, because that's one quarter of the way through the period. And when I look here, I do indeed have a maximum of pi over 4, so that means my curve has not been shifted at all. So there's no phase shift. So that means that C is 0. And then the last thing we want to do is calculate vertical shift. Well, there's a formula for this, and the formula for vertical shift is D equals the Y max minus A. So our Y max here was 3, and our amplitude, which we already calculated, is 3. And so D then is zero. So there's no vertical shift. And I encourage you to do the calculation and not just look at the graph. Alright, now we just simply put all these things in. So y equals three times the sine of two x minus zero in parentheses plus zero. And yes, you can simplify that. So y equals three sine up to x. So there's our graph of that. So that's the end of this first example.